morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Happy Easter. Today we have uh, Senior Deputy uh, Executive Secretary Menardo Guevara. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Happy Easter Monday, and I hope you had a very relaxing Holy Week. Um, I'm substituting or pinch hitting for Spokes Harry for uh, this week. Uh, he is on a well-deserved uh, R&R, but I, see, uh, I understand that he'll be back uh, pretty soon. So uh, I hope to be able to answer all of your questions based on the documents and official papers that pass through my desk. So uh, let's start with the good news first on the DOST scholars. We are pleased to announce that the uh, Department of Science and Technology, or DOST, recorded a total 8,994 qualified students for their scholarship programs for this year. This is 69.6% higher than the 5,303 qualifiers in 2015. Out of the 8,994 qualified scholars, 5,172 students will be under the Republic Act 7687 scholarship program, while 3,822 students will be under the DOST Science Education Institute Merit Scholarship Program. According to the DOST, a new stipend rate of 7,000 pesos per month will be given to the new and ongoing SNT scholars across all disciplines. Scholars are also entitled to tuition fee subsidy, book allowance, MSPE clothing allowance, one economy class round trip fare per year for those studying outside of their home province and group accident insurance. Pretty good. So uh, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, I, I, we don't have much uh, uh, events or too many uh, news that happened uh, during the past week, but uh, maybe uh, you have some important questions to ask and MPC which I'm willing to answer. MPC question, Alvin Baltasar, microphone. Alvin. Sir, magandang umaga po. Sir, uh, tungkol lang po doon sa development sa kaso ni Dima Felis na mukhang may, mayroon ng sentence doon sa mag-asawang employer niya. Ah. Sir, nabalita na po ba ito ni Pangulong Duterte? So, mm -hmm. any new directive uh, in connection with this latest development? Well, by this time, the President might have heard about uh, that uh, news that was picked up abroad. And the uh, directive that was given by the President was for the DFA uh, through the mission in Kuwait to find out, to verify whether in fact such uh, an event took place. I'm referring to the uh, sentencing of uh, this couple, who I understand are at large, still at large. They're not in Kuwait. Follow-up question? On, on. So, sir, pan, paano, ko, paano po kaya mangyayari doon para mm. ma-serve talaga yung, ano, yung uh, sentence doon sa mag-asawa? Well, that really uh, belongs to the, to the realm of Kuwaiti law. No? So if they have probably some extradition treaty with any country kung saan makikita yung mga nahanap, then probably they'll, make, uh, uh, they'll avail themselves of uh, such uh, uh, mutual legal assistance uh, agreements or extradition treaties if uh, possible. Sir, one last second. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, update on sa total ban ng deployment sa Kuwait? Any update? Any update? Uh, the agreement, uh, that still holds, no? The ban, on total ban on uh, sending OFWs to Kuwait is still on. Um, but of course, uh, an agreement, a memorandum of understanding is uh, being uh, formulated and uh, hopefully um, uh, the parties will, the state parties will come to terms as to how uh, our OFWs in Kuwait, as well as in other Middle Eastern countries, will be protected. So basically, uh, that will be uh, a solution to uh, this ban, this total ban about sending uh, OFWs to Kuwait. <coughs> Laila, follow up. 
uh, follow up muna sa Dima Dima Felis. Ace Dima Romero. Felis? Yes. <coughs> Secretary, but how is Malacanang taking the <coughs> sorry the report about the death sentence? Well, of course, the president and uh, I suppose all the entire Filipino people will be happy to know that that is true. No, Siyempre, that's what we want: uh, justice for the Mafelis. So let's hope that, in fact, that is true, and that the couple will actually be apprehended and brought to the bars of justice. In case uh, the DFA verifies that the information about the death sentence is uh, true, mm -hmm. will it affect the decision of the, the, the Labor Department to continue the deployment ban? I don't think so. I think it's still the agreement between the two countries on the manner of treating our OFWs that will matter, not the matter of... Uh, uh, the couple being brought to justice. Because previous reports quoted uh, the president and officials as saying that, that the ban will only be the will only be lifted uh, if there's justice for the mafelis. Um, I think that uh, that is very specific to a particular case. We have to think about the others who are similarly situated. Thank you, Secretary. Follow up. Other issue, Laila Salaveria. Laila. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, has the president made a decision on whether to accept the recommendation of three departments to close down Barakay by April 26? And if there's no decision yet, what's holding up? All right. Um, we received a recommendation, uh, a short letter with uh, very short uh, content from the Department of uh, the Environment and Natural Resources, DNR, DILG as well and DOT uh, recommending that uh, the closure of Boracay start on April 26 and for six months thereafter. Uh, but uh, we have requested the Office of the President through the Executive Secretary's Office have uh, requested the three agencies to submit a more detailed memo on the justification or if there is any qualification at all to their recommendation. and. Uh, uh, I think today we'll be receiving um, those <coughs> memorandum, uh, memoranda rather. I mean, expanding, explaining, and justifying their recommendation. Sir, in particular, uh, what are you looking for? Um, what factors would uh, inform the president's decision whether or not to close down the First island? First of all, it's the economic impact on the island and the people residing and working there that has to be considered by the president as well. Not only the environment, but also you know, people, their livelihood, businesses, all of this will have to be taken into account. Sir, um, when can we expect the decision? Because uh, April 26 is fast approaching. Pretty soon, I guess. Pretty soon. We are working on it. That's our top priority. Thank you. Follow up in Ina Andalong. Ina. Sir, you did mention that. Where are you? Um, Ina. <laughs> Sorry. Kulang nga ng details, but um, mm -hmm. do you have an idea if uh, the agencies are proposing a total na batalaga or in uh, phases? From the looks of it, based on that, uh, I think, uh, two-paragraph letter recommendation, it would appear to be a total uh, ban, no? as recommended. That's why we're asking for you know some qualifications, if there are any. The Department of Trade and Industry has actually submitted a separate memorandum to us saying that uh, maybe uh, this closure can be done in phases, all right? Because of the effect on businesses and livelihood in the area. So that is something that uh, the Office of the President will most likely consider as well. So far, sir, is it only the DTI that has uh, expressed um, concerns over a total closure? For now, yes, it's just the DTI. Okay. Sir, will um, the businesses in Boracay be given enough time to prepare for a closure if um, it does push through? Because it <coughs> says it's, uh, the proposal is to close by April 26. Right. I mean, that mm -hmm. only gives them a few weeks. Basically, earlier, mm -hmm. sinabi, begin ng one month. Mm -hmm. um, how much time will they be given at least as a notice? Mm -hmm. We'll actually consider that when we submit our recommendation to the president. Because the recommendations of the various departments will have to be processed by the Office of the Executive Secretary. And uh, we'll do our own recommendation based on uh, the explanation 
uh, or justification to be submitted by these three agencies as well as the comments of the DTI and other agencies that may be minded to submit their comments. Sir, what kind, last, what kind of assistance could be given, if any, to um, workers who may be affected by the closure? I mean, will the national government be providing them with any, I don't know, some sort of subsidy or work? We'll probably uh, tap the uh, DSWD for some interim relief measures or uh, the DOLE uh, to help them find employment elsewhere in some other islands or resorts perhaps while the cleanup is going on. Okay, follow up. Uh, Joseph, then Dexter. Sir, pag po Pinas nagkaroon ng decision to... Where are you? Hi, Sorry. sir. <laughs> <laughs> Ang taas naman. Yes, <laughs> liar. <laughs> liar ng tingin, sir. Okay. <laughs> sir, pag nag-decide uh, si Presidente to close or whatever decision that he has to make, what will be the legal basis? Because national coming in to the local government unit. Uh, kasi, uh, alam mo, yung parang talagang general uh, legal basis for something like that is the exercise of police power. Okay. All right. That's, that's basically it, no? Uh, of course, our environmental laws also play uh, a role, okay? So, yun ang actual legal basis, no? Uh, kung talagang merong violation of some environmental rules and regulations, that's it. So, no need to declare a state of calamity? Uh, that is also being considered. Kasi para pag merong kasing state of calamity, um, some, let's say, affected people may avail themselves of calamity loans and so forth and so on to tie themselves over. So what is the, the president's inclination? Because of course, when he said that soundbite before, no, medyo, mm -hmm. iba siguro, medyo impassioned yun. Uh -huh. But now we've seen maybe a little more mm -hmm. complex the situation in Boracay, meaning some are following rules, some are not following rules. It's not the whole island that's been, you know, mm -hmm. having the problem. Uh -huh. What is the president's uh, maybe inclination at this point? Well, I have not talked to him uh, directly, but I know that he's a very reasonable man. And uh, for that reason, I guess uh, he'll be able to consider ad other, you know, other points of view as well. So when you close it, ano pong magiging mechanics niyan? As in totally, shut down yung island, no tourists will be allowed, no op hotels will be allowed to operate. Baka sa ports pa lang, eh, meron ng ano dun, meron ng obstacle, no? Kasi, uh, maybe, maybe doon pa lang sa point na yun meron na kagad problema about entering. Except, of course, yung mga residents, no? How do you distinguish the residents from tourists? <laughs> um, siguro naman, meron naman mga proper way to identify kung sino yung visitor, kung sino yung resident talaga. Uh, hmm. Sir, yun pong, siguro yan. I think there are uh, roughly 30,000 from our reports before, no? Sa isa naming reporter. Uh -oh. 30,000 registered uh, local and foreign workers how much of a factor will this play in the president's decision to do whatever in Boracay? Um, yeah, definitely that's a consideration, you know, but uh, it's really the overwhelming uh, consideration for the president really is to restore Boracay, you know, to, to its uh, pristine condition. So um, I guess uh, the president is also ready, you know, um, all things being equal to uh, make a decision, a firm decision to save Boracay. Okay, so it's just too bad that some maybe foreign workers will be affected, but uh, we have to think much longer than six months. We have to think of the years to come, of the next generation to enjoy the island. So it's too bad that there are certain short-term effects, no? Some sacrifice that has to be made but we must not lose uh, sight of the fact that this is for the long term. Okay, follow up, Dexter Ganibe. Isaac, uh, good morning. Yes, Sir, uh, yung ini-expect natin na decision ng Pangulo kung magdi-decide man siya, pabuha uh, doon sa recommendation, is it in a form of a declaration or a proclamation uh, stating the closure or a state of calamity and the reason well, it could take uh, the form of a proclamation. It could take the form of a memorandum order. So under the ordinance power of the president, uh, those are the possible legal vehicles to implement the decision. Okay, and uh, ito ay lalabas bago yung recommendation or pwedeng mabago yung recommendation nila na April 26? 
I didn't quite get that. Uh, yung kung magdedesisyon man ng Pangulo, uh-oh. pwede niya bang uh, hindi sundin yung nirecommend na magsisimula ng April 26 oh, or baka rin niya? Of course. Oh, prerogative ng President John. No? Of course, uh, even us, no, when we make our recommendations, uh, we're not 100% sure that our recommendations will be followed. I mean, uh, opisina na namin yun. No? Because the President you know, has the prerogative. Uh, he has all the information uh, at the tip of his fingers. So he has better information than the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Sir, uh, this month may mga na-schedule na mga cruise ship na mag, mag-i-stop over sa Boracay. Mm-hmm. And the following months ay may mga naka-schedule pa. Mm-hmm. Uh, ang sinasabi, dapat mag-decide na para maabisuhan yung mga pupunta doon. Gaano katagal ang hihintay natin? Uh, That's why we're um, putting uh, this matter as our top priority this week. Okay, follow Thank up. You. Ina? Yeah. Sir, has, is the president aware of the plan to put up a casino in Boracay? And if so, what has he said about it? I'm sure that he is aware that there is a casino uh, supposed to be constructed in some island uh, of uh, the main, uh, the main, you know, the main area. All right, um, but you know that's construction uh, that will probably take about uh, maybe two years. All right, we're just looking at several months to clean up the main island. So that's not really inconsistent, come to think of it. Okay. Because um, s- there were some statements from mm-hmm. um, some secretaries, I believe, mm-hmm. DILG and DNR secretaries, mm-hmm. saying that um, the plan to put up a casino seems contradicting to efforts to rehabilitate the island. I was wondering if uh, those statements were already uh-huh. relayed to the First president. of all, it's uh, a pagcore matter, no, whether to grant or not to grant a license to operate. And uh, what I can say is for as long as any establishment for that matter, including this casino, complies with all the regulatory requirements like uh, environmental rules and regulations, there should be no problem with that. Even that also provides employment for residents there. Even if the president previously announced a moratorium on new casinos? Well, if there is such a moratorium, I'm not uh, factually uh, certain if there is such a mo- moratorium. But if there is uh, such a moratorium, then um, the operation of that casino will have to be suspended in the meantime, right? But the construction is another matter. Right. It's just, you know, uh, concreto, buhangin, and so forth and so on. Wala pa namang ginagawa. No operations yet. It could actually be uh, maybe uh, transformed into a hotel or some other uh, business uh, establishment. Not necessarily a casino. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, Bernadette, Nicolas, a uh, follow up? Okay. Really. Uh, sir, uh, Joan Nobaliaran from Inquire.net. Yes, a uh, follow up lang po sa casino, uh, proposed casino sa Boracay. Uh, you said po na they need to comply with regulatory requirements. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, how does, how would the, uh, the government ensure na talaga magko-comply sa regulatory requirements since yun nga po yung dating problema sa Boracay na uh-huh. di ba na hindi hindi po talaga uh-huh. eh, on paper yes they complied but hmm. a- in in actual uh, structures po hindi talaga so how how would the government I think ang um, principal agent dito na dapat na nakakaalam kung may compliance or not is a local government unit more than the regulatory agencies themselves who may or may not have representatives in various areas of the country, I think it's the local government unit who should be in the forefront of monitoring compliance. Last on Boracay, Benji Luanag. Benji? Sir, good yes, morning. Um, sir, uh, how about the local government uh, sa Boracay? Uh, mapapanagot ba natin sila? Kasi because of the closure, maraming nilabag yung mismong mga establishments doon. So, um, is, uh, the, is Malacanang aware of this, uh, sir? Well, um, I guess in a situation like that, it's inevitable that uh, there might be some inquiry kung mayroong pagkukulang or not ang local government unit. So, uh, probably the DILG or even the OP itself might uh, consider something like that. And also, are we only looking at Boracay? Hindi ba natin tinitignan pa yung ilang beaches? Yes, yes we, are all, we are also looking at the other areas na may potential, na may potentially at risk no, of being abused. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Bernadette, other issue na to? Other issues? Sir, Bernadette po from Business Mirror. 
Sir, dito Bernadette. po. Bernadette. Okay. <laughs> Sir, dun lang po sa update po sana dun sa EO on contractualization po. Mm -hmm. Kailan po map mapipirmahan po ni President? Uh, you know, uh, that draft EO uh, has been under study in our office qu for quite some time. Uh, the main problem there is yung mga gustong mangyari ay something that the executive department is not empowered to do. Kailangan legislative action talaga. Because labor code yan eh. Ha? Nahandoin yung provisions against uh, contractualization but allowing for some in some areas. Yeah? So if you want something like a total ban on contractualization, you need a law to repeal or amend that particular provision of the labor code. An executive order is meant only to supplement, all right, or to, you know, um, give the details, implementing details of what the law provides, but it cannot add or subtract or substantially alter what the law provides. That's really more for Congress to do. So I hope you can you will understand the limitations of an executive order. Follow up? May follow up doon? Um, may, may follow okay. up po ako. Uh, sir, kung meron pong kulang doon sa batas po natin ngayon about contractualization, ano pong pinopropose nyo sana ng provision sana na ma-include sa Constitution po? Ah, sa, labor code, sa, sa, sa labor sa code lang, pala, sa labor sorry. Code lang. Well, kung talagang um, total ban on contractualization, eh di yung provision pertaining to that, no? yung granting certain exemptions all right, from the uh, contractualization provision. May mga exceptions kasi dyan. Eh. Or, but, but for now, what uh, the executive department is doing is really um, uh, to make compliance with the existing regulations very strict. All right, yung monitoring ng compliance. At the very least, yun ang nagagawa ng executive department for now, especially the Department of Labor and Employment. No? So their um, bureaus on inspection and so forth and so on. Labor standards. Sir, uh, tanong ko lang po kung nag-push through po yung meeting ni Duterte with the labor groups before the Holy Week po. Kasi yun po yung sabi sa previous reports po. I'm not aware na in fact natuloy yung meeting na yun. I have not been proper uh, advised about it. Thank Sorry. you, Bob. Uh, okay, follow up. Marisol Halili. <coughs> Marisol. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. Just a clarification. Does it mean that there is a slim chance to issue an executive order on the contractualization following these concerns? Meron naman siguro. There's a slim chance, but not really on the substantive side of it. Baka it's really more on um, strictly enforcing the, 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 the existing provisions of the law. Kasi nga hindi naman po pwedeng i-alter ng executive order what the law provides. So what the law provides is strictly i-implement under that EO. Kung meron more safeguards that need to be put in place, yun ang gagawin under an EO. Okay. So more on strict implementation yes. so, lang. For now, no for now, that's what I can see. Pero substantial amendments, that's legislative. That's congressional. And may we know, sir, what particular provisions yung nakalagay dun sa recommendation or draft EO na hindi kayang uh, i-pursue ng executive department and needs legislation? Well, of course, in total ban itself no, is something that we cannot do by EO. Follow up. Um, Pia? Follow up. Pia? <laughs> Good choice, sir. Yeah, good choice, yes. sir, if I remember, yung draft EO that you're talking about, is it the same uh, draft EO that labor group submitted to President Duterte last year in Davao? Uh, that's one draft. Mm -hmm. we, there's also another draft coming from the Department of Labor and Employment and our own draft. Draft ng Office of the President. So three drafts, Paul? Yes, we are uh, trying to you know harmonize all of this, uh, putting all uh, useful... Uh, proposals together in one EO. So how different would the EO be uh, doon sa mga existing sir na department orders ng DOLE which actually calls for stricter regulation ng uh, contractual labor? Sir, Honestly, not much. Not much meaning sir wala naman tayong masyadong i-expect sir na bago. Kasi nga yung sa substantial provision, we can't do much about it. We can only do something about implementation, strict implementation of what we already have. 
So doon sa ina-advocate po ng mga labor groups na total ban on contractual labor, so hindi na po yun. So parang it's uh, basically we're putting a death sentence to that, sir. Not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. The executive can make that, you know, an initiative, um, can, can, can have the initiative in making that uh, proposal and pushing for it in Congress. Thank you, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Follow up sa contract contractualization si Joanna then Ace. Yes. Uh, follow up ko rin lang po, sir. Uh, you said po na kailangan po ng legislation to, mm -hmm. to amend certain uh, provisions sa labor code. Uh, has the executive department po spoken with Congress leaders uh, in-house and the Senate on how to deal with this issue? And uh, I, I understand, we all understand that uh, this uh, con contractualization po is mm. one of the main platforms, campaign promises ni, ni President. Uh, ano na po yung progreso pagdating nung, ano, sa legislation part? Ano hindi na po pa. Uh, as of this time, wala pa namang uh, ganun talagang actual na uh, liaison or coordination with the, with the legislative uh, department. Uh, we're still trying to do our best come up with an executive order that uh, can be acceptable to uh, the labor sector. So, nandun muna ang aming priority. Kung talagang unhappy pa rin ang labor sector with an EO that, the best EO that we can come up with, then that's a time that we'll probably do our consultations with Congress. <coughs> okay na yan. Other issue, Joseph Morong. Joseph. Sir, kay Napolis lang po. Um, so, ah, Napolis. Uh, yeah, because there's a recent decision, <coughs> no, February decision niya, the Supreme Court, uh, denying uh, yung MR niya for provisional liberty. Ah. Now, si Napolis, in that case, wanted to apply yung ginawa ni former President Arroyo na during the trial stage, nag demur to evidence, no? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, parang medyo kinatigan si uh, PGMA. Uh -oh ng court now she wanted to do the same thing mm -hmm. ang sabi ng supreme court is that stage yung problem no oh. uh, oh. si yung trial ni president ni former president Arroyo was doing the actual trial on the merits Tama. Mm -hmm. and she cannot apply that because right now she's not sa bail hearing lang siya exactly all right? right so question sir is right now denied your provisional liberty because of the stage that she's in mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. Assuming, sir, that the, any case in the Sandigan Bayan proceeds to a trial proper, mm -hmm. can she go up again to the Supreme Court? First, in the Sandigan Bayan, she can challenge the prosecution, demur to evidence, and then cites that to the Supreme Court to basically just apply the same context no, with oh. PJMA. Oh. Can that decision be changed, sir? Uh, the, 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 the basis for filing a demur to evidence, no? That's actually a motion to dismiss, right, in layman's terms, uh, is or comes after the presentation of evidence by the prosecution, meaning meron ng trial, na, o, trial proper on the merits of the case. And the prosecution has already presented all its evidence, no, as against the accused. Now, if the defense thinks that the evidence presented by the prosecution is insufficient to prove her guilt beyond reasonable doubt, that's when she files a demurrer to evidence. And if that is granted, that is tantamount to an acquittal. If that is denied, all right, so uh, it's up to her. She can challenge it uh, upstairs if she wants on the ground of grave abuse of discretion, if need be. All right, but uh, uh, that is, well, she can take that route the way uh, the former president uh, did it. But of course, magkaiba naman ng kaso yan, magkaiba naman ng ebidensya na ipepresent yan, no? Oh, but that could happen, huh? If a demurrer to evidence is, pre is presented and that's granted, that's acquittal. Meaning, sir, um, right now, dinin na yon, no? Kasi nga iba yung stage. But oh, 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 when oh. they go to, uh, clarification lang, sir, mm. when they go to trial proper, yes. she can try again. Yes, of course. Yeah. Oh. Pag after the presentation of the prosecution's evidence, right now, wala pa naman doon si Napoles, eh. Nasa bail hearing pa lang naman siya. It's not trial on the merits as yet. Questions? Oh. MPC? Huh. Other issue? Hannah. Follow up ka ba, 
Hana. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, may panawagan po yung mga yung isang sectoral movement sa Marawi po. Uh -huh. Hindi po daw sila uh, pinapakinggan ng pamahalaan uh -huh. regarding doon sa uh, rehabilitation sa, sa Marawi na hindi sila pinapakinggan at isinasantabi po yung kanilang mga iminumungkahi. Uh -huh. Ano po ang uh, uh, reaction po ng Palasyo dito at kung ano po yung uh, magiging move po doon sa kanilang kahilingan po? Uh, I'm sure that the uh, residents themselves will be given an opportunity to uh, make their own proposals on how to re re rehabilitate their own city. Baka naman meron lang konting, you know, uh, sort of misunderstanding or hindi naman ganun talaga ang ibig sabihin. No? But uh, I doubt it very much whether, you know, the residents themselves of the city will not even be consulted on the manner by which their city will have to be rehabilitated. Okay, there are cultural, historical uh, aspects that need to be respected and uh, considered. So when you are restoring something, you are bringing it back to its condition before. No? Of course, with much improvements. But essentially, yung pagiging essence of Marawi City, as a Muslim city, Okay. will have to be taken into account you know, in sir, the restoration process. Sir, kay, uh, healing din po na, appeal po nila kay Pangulong Duterte na mm -hmm. uh, wag po ituloy yung proposed plan na magkaroon ng economic zone sa Marawi mm -hmm. at uh, wag po maglagay uh, po ng military camp doon mismo sa syudad po. Kung pagibigan po ba ng Pangulo yung healing nila? Uh, I think it's too early you know, to uh, say whether the President will uh, act on that uh, request. No? We'll leave it to uh, the task force uh, Bangon Marawi to uh, consider that, no? to take that into account and to evaluate whether the existence or non-existence of a military camp inside Marawi City is advisable and whether or not uh, converting it into a, an economic zone will be for uh, the betterment of the city or not. That's all for the task force to evaluate and decide on. Okay, thank you, Hana. Uh, Joanna? Sir, reaction lang po ng palasyo dun sa kasong, uh, sa complaint na final ng uh, Akbayan Youth against uh, Communications Assistant Secretary Mungka Uson administrative case po, uh, administrative complaint for allegedly using her position to proliferate fake news and silence the critics of the government. May I get your, uh, may I get palace reactions po? Reaction. Um, I understand that that was filed before the Ombudsman, an administrative case. Well, I'm sure uh, Asak Moka will be able to uh, defend herself. There are some processes to, to follow and to observe, and she'll be given her fair chance no? uh, to be able to explain. Ace Romero. Mm -hmm. But do you agree that she is purveying fake news? Of course not. <laughs> why, why, Secretary? <laughs> well, I, I really don't have... Um, uh, uh, to tell you frankly, hindi ko naman binabasa ninyo <laughs> uh, lahat ng mga nasa vlogs. No? I, don't, I don't really have much time to go over all of these things. But uh, she has consistently denied it. No? So I take her word for it. As a fellow worker, I take her word so for it. So you disagree with the Akbayan youth who accuse her of spreading? Uh, I really am not in a position to say whether they have any prima facie basis or not. Because uh, to tell you frankly, nga, hindi, ko na, hindi ko naman nababasa rin yung mga blogs na sinasabi. Thank you, Secretary. <laughs> Joseph Moro, may talong ka? Joseph? Yeah, si, <laughs> si, si <my> <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Sir, meron daw mensahe ba o reaction daw yung palace dun sa start ng recounting sa vice presidential ano? Well, uh, the palace welcomes the recount, no? Para masettle na yung uh, long festering uh, dispute na yan, no? Well, uh, other than that, uh, this is a judicial matter. This is before the presidential electoral tribunal already. So we leave it uh, to the co-equal branch to handle that. Okay, MPC, no more questions? Ina? Okay. Okay, no thank more? you, Thank senior you very much. Deputy. It's a happy week. <laughs> okay, thank you, Senior Deputy right. Executive Secretary Gibara. Thank you, Malakanyang Press Corps. Back to our main studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.